Hi there! Hope that you have had a great day, a sunny day I hope, and hope that your week had started on a positive note. I'm having a beautiful conversation today about the world of retail and we are looking more specifically at how the COVID-19 situation uh, had changed the face of retail. COVID-19 had shaken the world of retail and had uh, put many retailers to test. Some managed these difficult times and others had uh, a harder luck. Uh, I'm talking to, to today with uh, Julia, who is a trend researcher and a content curator. We're going to talk about uh, retail and uh, more specifically, we're going to look at uh, the changes that the retail has gone through uh, pre and post uh, COVID-19. So we thought it would be interesting uh, to look at this or to draw uh, this spectrum pre and post in order to see how retailers uh, are thinking of their strategies in order to enhance uh, their difficult situations and in order to make the best uh, out of uh, their businesses uh, during these difficult times. So we're going to look at that with Julia and I'm going to invite her in a little second. I'm going to wait. I think we're getting ready. Perfect. Hi, Julia. Hi. How are hello. you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are fine. you? I'm great. I'm great uh, because it's sunny finally. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and we're having uh, su summery days, so it's good. Uh, Julia, we have a lot of things to talk about this evening. Yes. And <laughs> I have done a little introduction uh, about uh, the topic in general, but I would leave the floor to you because you will, guiding, you will be guiding us through the current retail transformations that are taking place. Uh, and we will try to highlight uh, the major trends uh, that we are looking at today. So I leave the floor to you to introduce yourself and what you do. Yeah. So my name is uh, Julia Mosquen. I am based in Barcelona and I, I am a trend uh, researcher. I also work as a, a content curator for GoPopUp, which is a company that um, takes care of pop-up events. We help uh, companies to throw their pop-up events, uh, 360, from uh, um, finding their space to helping them with a the concept and, and through launching. Uh, as a trend researcher, I, I go out there uh, physically, but also through the internet, because uh, the beautiful things about internet is that we can be and search in another part of the world. I go and look for signals, signals, signals that are telling me uh, towards which direction the future might be. Uh, it is uh, tricky because, of course, uh, what is happening tomorrow, even tomorrow, no one, no one knows. Uh, but that's what trend researchers do. They, they don't look for trends because trends are already, uh, it's, it's something that it's the same mainstream. What we do is that we look for signals that will tell us uh, what probably the future will be. Okay, so if you're looking at uh, these signals, do you follow a specific process to be able to um, highlight like uh, major uh, points, connect the dots? How do you do it? Is there a specific process? Oh, I mean, of course, yes and no. And this is the tricky part of being a trend researcher. Of course, you need to follow a certain, uh, let's say, um, way of working that helps you to identify a pattern meaning that, of course, you're collecting signals from very different uh, uh, sectors, because if you're doing, a lot of people think that when you do trend research, because you do trend research for, for example, retail, you're just going to look in retail, but that's, that's not what we do. We really look at 360, because uh, an innovation or a disruption uh, can and will have effect in all the other sectors, too. Okay. So, uh, we, we go out, out there and we look for things that we uh, find interesting that are very different 
uh, that they're, they're having maybe a local uh, impact and, and that the impact has the possibility to uh, expand uh, geographically. And we start like connecting them. Each researcher has his own uh, method, let's say. Uh, uh, but then the, 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 going to your question, the difficult part is when you have all these uh, signals is how you look at, how you see a certain pattern that will tell you, okay, this is what I think uh, this trend will turn towards. Um, and so it is really a pattern recognition process. Uh, some signals are, let's say, stronger because they're quite evident, and, mm -hmm. and then you go, let's say, following a sort of method, but then some, most of the time it's really a gut feeling that you have. You get this gut feeling that tells you, hmm, this is very important somehow. I think this is, this is a signal that is telling me something. Okay, it's really interesting. Um, however, would you um, think of, for example, uh, a certain uh, process related to different types of industries, different retail industries, uh, or you use the same process to depict uh, or highlight uh, th th these pieces of information uh, through all the, the retail industries? Well, I am constantly researching every day. That's what I try to do every day. Every day I'm, I'm reading and trying to soak in with very different information from normal newspaper to newspaper that are very specific of, of different sectors. Um, and, and, and then I look at very other different industry. I mean, sometimes I'm looking at the MIT, NASA, like everything that can be, can bring innovation. And that's something that I do on a daily basis to keep myself updated. Then, of course, when I'm researching for uh, specific um, sectors or when a, co a customer comes and tells me, hey, um, I would like to know, you know, what, what, what could be the trend for my sector, my industry or a specific product, then of course I have like this overview of what can, what is like the 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 bigger uh, let's say um, trend or the bigger overview I would say, and then I go into specific and I look at a reference in the sector. Of course, uh, there are references in the sector, and and when consumers uh, um, consume a lot of certain a certain uh, product or a certain services, they take that as a reference. So of course you need to look the impact that those things have in order to then develop other things. So yeah. that's that's how I work. Okay. Let's talk about now the, the general highlights of today's industry. I mean, uh, out of uh, this uh, research that you have done maybe uh, this week, uh, what's going on in the retail scene? What are the causes? What are the evolutions? What are the influences that we should uh, understand in today's retail world? Well, first of all, it is a moment of confusion for, us, for everybody. <laughs> From consumers to retailers. I mean, consumers, uh, uh, over the last few weeks, we finally uh, open. Most countries are trying to go back to a normality, depending on the, on the different uh, uh, curves that they had in their own country. Uh, so both consumers and retailers are like trying to understand how they had to adjust to this new normality and the social mm -hmm. distancing. On one hand, consumers are a little bit afraid, of course, of, of going back to, to normality, let's say, because everything is not the same anymore. Uh, and on the other hand, um, retailers are trying to understand how they have to adapt themselves to, uh, for example, even just you know, a normal store, uh, clothing store. Am I going to allow my consumers to try on uh, clothing or not? So they have to comply to all these regulations. So there is a, a big process of adjusting and rethinking a lot of things. Yeah. For me, the main uh, challenge that today's retailers, uh, and not only retails, I think this is also going for a horeca, for the travel industry, is um, the meaning of experiential. Mm -hmm. um, nothing is the same anymore when the excitement of of you know big crowds of going out it's, it, it, it doesn't appeal anymore and, and and 
there's an appeal on one hand and on the other hand it can be done because it's not allowed so how retailers are are are, are in a moment they have to rethink how can i still propose uh, ex an experience that it's meaningful that attracts my consumer uh, that retains them while complying to this new normality and i think yeah. that's that this is like the biggest um cultural tension that I see that in this moment. Yes, and uh, this is really interesting because it also might uh, draw retailers to rethink uh, how to use other uh, means uh, of communications maybe or technological means in order to engage with consumers. Are we looking uh, into that direction as well? Of course. Um... No, it's not, it's not that I want to be self-reference, but of course, it's the closest reference that I have. It's, uh, as I was saying, beside being um, a trend researcher, I work, I work as a content curator for pop-up. So we try to reinvent ourselves right away to offer digital pop-ups because uh, when we're not able to meet, we need to uh, find other ways to attract and keep connecting with our consumers. So what we're seeing is um, that those those uh, companies that didn't have any digital uh, possibility to um, keep connecting with their consumers are really facing um, a threat, let's say, yes. uh, for, for different reasons. And it's not only a question of, of monetarization, of course, it's also a question of really that community that we have been built uh, through, through time. So uh, on one hand, it's it's digitalizing the, the business in a certain way, which doesn't mean that per se you have to have uh, e-commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading about this company that is called Action. I don't know if you know, it's a Dutch company. They sell yeah, their retail, but not clothing. And they didn't have anything digital. And they decided that through their webpage, which was a simple presentation of, of their company, they allow their consumers to place their orders and then pick it up in store. Yeah. So uh, retailers need to see, okay, how can I blend in a certain digital uh, uh, way of behaving towards my consumers and blending in with the, with the, with, with the physical part? Because, yeah. I mean, if, if another, let's, let's be... Uh, it is it is a bit strong but it's it's true i mean if another waves arrive in two months if you haven't digitalized somehow yourself probably you won't survive another yeah. Yeah. another wave of, of another lockdown yeah so somehow retailers now need to be prepared if another waves arrive that they somehow have digitalized their services and the way that they relate to their consumers in order to uh maintain uh a connection yeah but the, the, this is a very important point that you raised. You mean that sometimes if we were a physical or, or a traditional type of retailer and that we were not connected uh, online or we didn't have another uh, digital channel in order to distribute our products, we still could connect digitally, but through other means. Of course. I mean, uh, w which, which means that retailers could be really creative today in the way that they are doing businesses yeah. we, do, we, we do not see that retailers conform to like uh, the same way of doing business or they copy each other's uh, businesses do you think that retailers today are being very creative and working with what they have in hand I think I mean it is a paradox in my opinion because uh, experiential retail has shows us that they can be very creative in mm -hmm. concepts, but I don't see that that I don't see that same creativity in the way they connect to their consumers, or at okay. least not at the same extent. I think that there's a lot of new things that they can still do, and probably this is the beauty of of this moment that it's a challenge, but it's also a moment to just try because if you don't try now when are you going to try i mean it's, it's it's a moment where retailers should be very uh like dare to just try new possibilities yeah. i was um i uh, was reading about this um company in italy they do immersive dinners and they reinvented themselves by doing uh, like digital dinners 
So basically you would order this box with all the ingredients, nicely packed, uh, very uh, Italian, uh, you know, uh, quality. Uh, you order them, the, order the package and arrive home like I think one day before you uh, uh, book the event and then you will connect through an online channel to basically cook from home with the ingredients that then send you but directly with a cook that will yeah. be there just for you and I thought oh my god this is so amazing because they re and this is what I'm saying when it's recreating the experience, the new meaning of experiential, because they were coming from being these experiential dinners that they were like, you know, immersive dinners with arts, music, so like amazing. And of course, it's like, wow, what are we going to do? And they were able to recreate a very particular experience, um, merging. Um, there's so many ingredients in this, in, this, in this format, I think, because there's like do it yourself, which is something that through the lockdown when like skyrocket you know we did ourselves like our hair True. our nails yeah and yeah <laughs> so there's do it yourself there is um uh, um e-commerce because you're ordering the, the the package which for a restaurant or anyways for the hospitality is quite um, interesting you know, that you order something like that and then um and then the possibility to do something live yeah uh and, pers and personal, because you have a very uh, good cook just for you, helping you to, to, to prepare your meal. Yes. So there is a lot of room for uh, doing and creating these kind of experiences. And retail, uh, I, don't, I think they still can do more. Yes, yes. So there I are... <laughs> the, yeah, I, I mean, there are possibilities to create and today there is a floor to create because no one is judging us. Of course. Uh, the brand ju just needs to uh, define what works best yeah. and do it. Yeah. Let's let go into specifics and talk today about what threatens a brand from staying away from the market or from going out of business. Well, the, the threats nowadays and post COVID are, I mean, are several. Um, as I was saying before, one thing is like the flexibility. If they haven't been able to adapt to this change and, and, and invent a new way of, of, of working and possibly thinking, okay, if another wave of virus or another disruption similar to this will come, uh, you know, be prepared again to survive because otherwise they won't. On one hand, this. So then... Uh, somehow digitalizing we have seen that the companies that were able to at least balance their loss were companies that already had uh, e-commerce quite prepared uh, so that uh, we we saw this big um, room of um, amount of consumer moving from physical becoming digital for the first time digital consumers for the first time so yeah. Somehow, if a company, a brand nowadays doesn't have that connection through digital, it is a threat for what we were saying uh, before. And then, of course, I mean, I, I was reading that a lot of um, brands in, in um, physical stores in, in the United States are not opening, even if now they can, because rent is too high. They don't understand how they can be sustainable with the amount of consumers that they can have in because um, sales per square meters is, is, you know, is calculated that way. So I think there is also a, a good opportunity to even rethink all the KPIs of, of the brands, you know, like everything. So if um, um, the, the market doesn't, you know, changes in the way that... Uh, Sorry, because I, I got a little bit out of uh, <laughs> my connections, my, my pattern. Because uh, <laughs> what, what, I, what I wanted to say when I was uh, referring to the shops in the United States is that the threat there is also how the market, the, the, the brick and mortar market is working. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, consumers, um, brands are mainly physical and they're not able to uh, balance and having some income through an online channel. Uh, the brick and mortar is it's just very harsh. I mean, the, the, the rents are super high and that's what probably 
most of, of stores are, are forced to close because they're not able to, yeah, to yeah. pay the, the rent. Because there is uh, certainly a need to compensate the losses of uh, uh, what physical retail might do. And if we don't have another channel to do that, we might be at great risk. Of course. Uh, and and what 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 would um, keep the brand you think in your opinion going on, if there there is no possibility of operating digitally or if the brand is not prepared to do that, what could a brand do to stay in business? Hmm. That's a very good question. I mean, I think that there are several channels that you can. I understand that, for example, if a small um brand from a neighborhood you know a small store yeah doesn't have the possibility to create a whole uh, online platform because they, they can for different reasons because it's costly or whatever but as we were saying before there's so many other channels that they can still use to get in co- be in contact with their, their customer they're, that they're free i mean whatsapp is is it's used largely used from uh by small brands, Instagram. Um, I think that the, 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 they need to somehow be able to use any digital channel uh, to still connect with their consumers. Yeah, we, saw, we see, I don't know, uh, it has been uh, very uh, late in, in Europe, but in the Middle East or in Asia, there's a lot of uh, social selling, like yeah. one-on-one through these social media. And yeah. uh, it, it was really hard at first uh, to see that in Europe, uh, brands could think about it or adopt it as people were not acquainted to that. But yeah. we might be going into that direction, I believe. And, and um Mm, Facebook has been working for a long time to create a space on Facebook for small owners. And this yeah. is something that they have done upon the pandemic. It is something that they have been working already for a long time uh, and very specific. I have read a very interesting interview to Mark Zuckerberg in which he was uh, explaining how he was really meeting with small business owners to understand which were their needs in order to really build a platform that they could use for uh, growth yeah. without, you know, being easy because it's already there. They just need to, to implement Upload their, yeah, exactly. yeah. So yeah. Um, it is interesting because this work has been, has been done uh, before the pandemic, but then it's like, wow, now it's what we needed, you know, as per yesterday. Yeah. So probably uh, Facebook would be a very good tool to use for buy a small uh, business Re- businesses. Yeah. Yeah. We have a we have a little question, uh, Julia. Is there a winning formula for brands uh, to survive after this crisis, or a winning oh. formula <laughs> for brands to stay in business? Mm, I think that it is a combination of things: um, flexibility, because you need to be like flexible to adapt both your business and your product to what is the new situation. Uh, Transparency. I mean, bigger or small community that you have, that you have, depending on how big is your business, um, your consumers that really care for your company are, will support you. And so be uh, very open about what you're doing how you're doing it, which kind of support you need. I think that uh, reaching out to, to, to your consumers in a moment of need, they will support you. And there were very beautiful examples during this pandemic of um, people that were paying up front for, for example, restaurants in order to survive the period. And now and, um, and, um, and have dinner. So these, these two things I think that are key. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we have talked about the importance of physical businesses into getting uh, a certain uh, online uh, channel, maybe a smaller version uh, if they couldn't 
set up a full functional uh, website, a commercial website. Mm -hmm. However, we, we also uh, have encountered uh, purely digital native brands or uh, pure e-commerce brands uh, that also had the urge to have a physical representation on the market. So today, uh, post pre and post pandemic, what was uh, the major uh, action uh, that these pure players were, were doing? Well, uh, what we saw is that they also struggled. I mean, look at Amazon, that it's a um, digital native uh, company and their demand went so high that they weren't able to, you know, logistically and, 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 and under a distribution point of view to supply all the demand. Yeah. So, of course, um, what we saw, but, and this happened also to companies that were, I mean, the consumer behavior shift so radically in those months that we understood that the online wasn't ready for this. Yes. That's what we saw. And, and for me, the funniest thing is that I thought that we were a very digitalized society, and I think we are not. Not to the extent that it was needed in this period. For me, it was, was very interesting. So these um, digitally native companies, of course, they had an advantage because they already had a, more strong, like a stronger system to support the demand, but still they weren't able to completely cover it. So uh, they had to go and find new people to understand how they had to do. I mean, they were overworking. Yeah. So I guess that they will have to strengthen their logistic and the distribution uh, sectors to be able to uh, grow their, their uh, capacity of uh, um, maintaining... To meet with the demand. The demand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, um, but of course, also digital uh, native companies will always need to uh, go out there and meet their consumers. Yes. And they will do it for different reasons because uh, they want to explain how they work because uh, they want to reach a very specific community. I mean, this will, will, hap will always happen and, and pop-ups are the, the, the best way, of course. Yeah, we will talk about that in a, in a minute. We yeah. To... <laughs> but yeah. Amazon, just, just to mention a few, like Amazon did it. They did, they, and they have done like several pop-ups and very interesting. So to reach their consumers, Facebook has done it, which you would think, okay, they just, uh, they are just uh, providing a service. So why would they would do that? But there is the need to reach the consumer when the consumer is struggling around something and to stre strengthen the the uh the relationship yeah yeah we'll talk about this in a few but we have a little question i don't know if it appears on the screen what would you think are the most important digital experiences consumers will be looking for in the short run i mean thinking the consumers will have if we want to attract consumers to stores, we will have to invent a new experience. Digital is something that has been there already, but of course this um, COVID-19 has worked as an accelerator or yeah. of trend that we're already there. Yeah. Digital has been there for a long time, but I think that it's about to hit the mainstream and we will see it more. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I think that that will attract attract consumers because, um, I, I I mean I've read I've read a lot of of digital stores and how they're done, but I've never experienced one. If there will be one tomorrow in Barcelona, I will go because yeah, yeah. Those, inter, those interactive uh, mirrors they have like there's so many uh, interesting options, and I think that. Uh, that it's something that in the short term will, will be a big attraction and an interesting solution okay. for consumers and brands. Mm. So, so we've talked about the importance of uh, merging uh, physical and digital. We've talked about the importance of injecting technology or um, uh, like uh, technological tools within the store. And uh, uh, we will talk now about um, uh, the importance of 
these pop-up stores. Pop-up stores could help brands into creating these physical experiences that we're talking about. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry, I was late to, to ask the question. So let's talk about these pop-up stores, Julia, the importance of pop-up stores in creating or in filling needs that the brands might uh, be looking for and how they serve these brands well. Yeah. Well, just to talk as a consequence of, of, of COVID, we, we are seeing a lot of uh, some companies that are using pop-ups in order to sell all those products that weren't sold yeah. <laughs> during, uh, during the, 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 the pandemic. During yeah. the pandemic, during the lockdown. Yeah. So, uh, which is interesting because it's actually how pop-ups became a thing. So that in the beginning they were used as this very fast event to just sell all those, uh, let's say, leftover from, from the store. So of course we're seeing that. But I like to call pop-ups like a Pandora vase, because you can just like, you know, you open it and you just like do whatever you want with it. So I think that with pop-ups, it's like really the tool in order to reinvent yourself as, as, a, as a brand. So. Yeah you were doing your business until yesterday in a certain way. And what you can do is that, okay, I use the format of a pop-up to ex experiment new possible formats that I might, will be willing to bring to my uh, stores on the longer run in order yeah. to be sustainable, to be more up to date with all the demands and, and the consumers need and so on. So uh, I think that, in this particular moment, pop-ups are going to be very, very useful for this. Okay. And we have seen, uh, especially with Go Pop Up, the company which you curate for, we have seen that there are today also an emerging form of online pop-up stores. Yeah. So this is also giving uh, uh, brands more possibilities of being uh, creative or filling their needs with uh, what um, could be useful to them. What's the difference between an online and uh, an offline pop-up store? Of course. So uh, an online, what a pop, a uh, um, physical pop-up store is just like, a, let's say, normal store. Uh, that it's just for a few days or for a certain uh, period of time. So it's limited in in the in the time and most likely in the concept because usually pop-ups have a very different concept than the uh, normal stores. Uh, a physical, a uh, digital pop-up is basically the translation of a physical pop-up, a physical pop-up, but on internet. So we have a platform where we allowed a brand uh, or an artist. We have had so many different uh, digital uh, pop-ups to create uh, an event in which they are explain who they are, what they do, what is their product. So I really see the digital pop-up as a very interesting opportunity of um, for being transparent. Yeah, okay. So as connected to what we were saying before, there is really a need of, of, of transparency. Consumers want to understand uh, a lot of things of what is happening behind the scene, above all in fashion, but it's yeah. like a very blurry world. So, world. so digital pop-ups are a very, a very useful tool to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we have seen also that uh, communications uh, during uh, this uh, difficult lockdown situation uh, has taken also a great uh, deal in, in, in brand uh, daily lives. Uh, how does communication contribute to uh, enhancing uh, the, the brand experience, whether physically or digitally? Well, I mean, communication is everything. Uh, it's what we do on a daily basis when we talk. So, of course, it's, it's, it's key. Um, how you create, create expectation in, in the consumer so then you attract it. How then you communicate the event and, and, and you communicate your event not only through your channels, but also through your consumers. Because then in mm. the end, that's what you want. You want your consumers to tell the experience to other people. Why yeah. it was interesting, why I was there, what have you missed? I went, you didn't go. Wow. Uh, and then, of course, as a, 
as a marketing tool, like uh, communication uh, is then used after as a, I mean, all the content that you can create, for example, doing a pop-up is something that then you can use after, after as, as a marketing for the promotion of your own uh, business. So during, I don't know, like, sorry, I, 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 were you referring more also specifically during the pandemic or just in general? Uh, I was referring specifically during the pandemic. Okay. Because, of course, during the pandemic, um, there were several challenges. The m main one is sentiment. Yeah. We couldn't... Sentiment and, and being relatable. We couldn't keep communicating, um, look how cool I look with this. I don't know, <laughs> dress or whatever, when half of the people, you know, are out there trying to figure out how to re rebuild their lives. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a very, very uh, challenging moment in which you were uh, measuring all the time, okay, what I'm communicating is a, uh, is it, is it relatable to what my consumers are going through in this moment or not? Mm -hmm. uh, but also what, what I've saw there is a lot of um, let's say education like this is what I'm doing during during the pandemic a lot of companies were able to use also a lot of self um, oh, how do you say that in English um, when you make fun of yourself a little bit which it was also good because it was also a distraction which is also what we need sometimes to give to our consumers yeah, which to yeah. inspire them under different point of view, but also give them that a little bit of, of distraction. Okay. Uh, do you think that uh, this is the question that we have? Do you think that brands have become more personal, or the tone of voice, or the the relationship maybe with uh, their customers have become more personal during this uh, lockdown uh, period? Mm. Maybe at a certain point, yes, because in the diversity of how things were uh, going on in different countries, we were also going through that all together. Yeah. That had created a sense of togetherness that maybe in, from what I remember in my life, I've never experienced it before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember waking up in the morning and thinking at a different people, like, you know, friends and family across the world and thinking they are going through the same in this exact moment. Yes. So that was something that allowed companies to be more personal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's really important because we have seen that uh, there were more, more engagement uh, on social sites. Uh, they were providing like lots of uh, yoga classes or yeah. uh, someone who's playing music, etc. So this direction that we, we haven't explored beforehand and suddenly we saw that brands tried to care much and to tell their customers maybe that, okay, hold on, we're not here to sell you, we're just here besides you and this yeah. was a good message that brands have, have tried to, to, to send um, now let's talk about customers during, uh, pre, during and after this, this situation, do you think that uh, customers have changed as well, do their perceptions about retail have changed or do you think their actions are momentary hmm. this is a very good question I think I think we are seeing a little bit of everything. Um, I do think that there, re there is a part of consumers that it's more cautious now for different reasons. Uh, it has been a very intense period of also um, introspection and to, you know, giving a different order of what is important for me in my life. Yeah. So I think that some consumers will go through a period of, okay, I'm just going to buy what I need. I will look for a certain product that it's more uh, friendly with the environment, 
there have been certain topics that came up and they became very strong, I think, in the, con in the consumer sentiment of, yeah. uh, about, uh, around buying. Yeah, yeah. On the other hand, you have seen, you know, uh, queues of consumers uh, uh, going to Primark in, in, the, in the UK, UK uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, which for me was a little bit like, wow, this is, this is strange. So I cannot, I cannot say that we, have, we are seeing consumers just all of them moving in a certain way. I think that <clears throat> it really depends, sorry, <clears throat> it really depends uh, from, it really depends on the values of your companies, I think. Mm -hmm. Meaning mm -hmm. that if a company had already certain values that were more, for example, sensible with the environment, that had a certain type of perceiving uh, the world and how we are, probably the consumers from those brands will have a more uh, cautious uh, attitude towards yeah. uh, uh Consumer. cautious or uh, yeah a relatable a relatable relationship uh, exactly. rather than cautious while okay. on the other spectrum it's completely different exactly um it's really important because we have seen that uh, brand uh, customers were observing brands more than ever during this period and uh, after uh, the lockdown was released we saw that customers uh, acted like it's payday time and I'm either, either going to buy from you, either I'm going to be punishing you. And we saw that lots of customers took harsh decisions uh, regarding brands and whether they are going to consume or not with them. I mean, this is personal and I saw it uh, around me and around retailers from whom I shopped uh, on a more regular fashion but then a reading also about it was was interesting don't you think yeah and that has happened not only for brands but also for influencers for famous people there has been a, a lens putting on how you behave from your privilege uh life towards what is happening and in the uk there is this website that is called hero or zero and you can put a name and they will tell you how they behave during the, uh, the pandemic. So for example, you put the name of someone famous and you will see if that person um, gave uh, money for, or you, you, know, you did something to help from their privileged uh, uh, situation to help yeah. uh, what it was happening. So I think that the sentiment, it's, it's, it's the same across uh, you know, famous people, brands, like we are putting a lens and seeing, okay, how are you behaving? Yeah, 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 yeah. it's really, it's really important. Uh, and, and it's really interesting to see that, how we are behaving and how brands are behaving as well. Yeah. Let's let's do a, a wrap up and um, ab about all of these topics that we've discussed today. So we looked at three main important themes. We looked at uh, the importance of I'm going to run them here again with you, uh, the digitalized retail. We looked at personalized online services and we gave a very beautiful example of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, we've looked at the importance of having uh, a, a merge between physical and digital retail. And now, uh, if we have talked about all of these, what's next for retailers? Hmm. I think retailers uh, will have to go through a holistic digital transformation. Hmm. Uh, which means understanding how data and like anything digital that can support them can be integrated in their uh, business. And it touches so many other topics that are very interesting, like uh, are important and, 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 and like for example, sustainability. Uh, so we haven't even touched it, but it's, it is something that during the pandemic has uh, expanded and it's, it's there to, uh, and was put on the lens. Mm -hmm. So 
what we were saying, all these unsold clothing. So, I mean, retailers need to really rely on every single thing that they do, uh, rely on technology in order to improve how they uh, work. To okay. then uh, uh, be more sustainable in the way they produce, uh, produce more uh, personalized items that they don't get discharged, like distribution, um, like everything, really a holistic di digitalization. Which is really important because, as you said, it comes and adds up uh, to the important trends that we discussed earlier. And it helps brands rethink uh, through data and through information their best ways and best practices in order to make more sense uh, to the target audience. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm waving at Daniela, who just uh, joined us uh, right I now. And, <laughs> and we discussed a little bit yesterday on uh, the importance of sustainability uh, in, in businesses, etc. Yeah, but it's such a big uh, topic that, I mean, when you slightly bring it in, I'm always very afraid because it's just, it's just so big that you really need to just like dedicate one talk only on that topic. <laughs> okay, well, maybe it might be the opportunity for us to, to think of uh, next uh, live session and uh, talk about this in, in more detail. Why not? Mm. Um, so uh, let, let's do like a wrap up and yes. maybe try to uh, add on uh, things that might be uh, interesting in, with regards to uh, brands and customer pre, during, and post-COVID uh, situation. How we can uh, wrap this uh, up in, in, and highlight the main themes. Yeah, so we, we, discuss, we, we touch the meaning of um, experiential. No? So reinvent what experiential mean, means. Um, a holistic digitalization but also having any digital channel that supports you. Because, I mean, here we're talking on a spect spectrum from very big retail to small. So, of course, it is different how you, you, you tackle that. But, um, and then um, digital stores. Yeah. Uh, so having uh, still the, the physical store as a very important point because that will stay. I mean, I don't believe to those people that say, ah, oh, stores won't, won't stay. I mean, physical store will stay. We, we like going out. We like to create community. We like the experience. But of course, it will need to be integrated with, with, with uh, more digital aspects. Yes, yeah. it has to be done differently to make more sense. And I think, uh, as we have discussed earlier, we have to, as retailers, integrate our tools in order to help us sustain. If we, ha if we, if we were relying only on physical stores uh, and we did not have any digital aspects to rely yeah. on. And we also, we tackled the issue or the importance of uh, social media uh, as tools that help not only in communicating, but also in injecting ways to maybe promote or to be able to do a sales lead uh, uh, of our products, especially if we were smaller retailers or smaller businesses. Yeah, yeah voilà. that's why I like to use a holistic digitalization because it includes like every aspect. So any way that you can somehow integrate a certain uh, digitalized service a digital digitalized channel you should uh, um, at least uh, experiment with it yeah sure uh, julia did we do the round uh did we talk about everything that we we thought we'd be discussing today i think so <laughs> we, we talk about so many things that the people that were listening maybe we even confuse them because <laughs> it was like a little bit but because of the sol it's a very interesting period because so many things are happening and it's and it touches so many points uh, and everything is interwoven so yeah but yeah. i think that we we covered uh, a lot of very interesting topics we i think we gave up there some food for thoughts 
Exactly, yes. And many interesting terms that we raised today. We're going to run them in the story just right after the live. Uh, and hopefully we will meet again to maybe talk about sustainability and uh, ethical business practices, ethical business retail practices, which could be also an interesting topic to, to all those who, uh, uh, who are rethinking their retail strategies. Yeah. Daniela, thank you for coming, even if you were late. <laughs> we are going to run uh, this uh, episode on IGTV and later on on YouTube so that everyone can have access to it. Uh, I thank you again, Julia, for your time. Thank you for and, me. And thank you for all the insights that you gave us. And hopefully we meet again soon in future episodes. Yes. <laughs> Bye to everybody. Thank you. Thank you and have a nice evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.